Praise God, praise God, praise God, family. Thank you so much for uh, visiting me again. I'm, I'm just thankful and grateful and so blessed to have this opportunity to share with you uh, what the Lord has been continuing to teach me over these decades that I have been uh, studying and, and practicing uh, traditional uh, naturopathy, uh, which is biblical health and healing. And so on today, I want to encourage you as it relates to your health, as it relates to your healing, as it relates to the health and the healing of your loved ones, as it relates to the health and the healing of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And while we're in this season of very profound healing of the, our spirits and our souls and our bodies, I just want to take you back to the word of the Lord. And um, the Lord gave me this uh, passage of scripture, oh, so many years ago. You know, I've been in ministry uh, for a couple of decades now. And um, we're all familiar with Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. And this is a passage of scripture that, uh, as I said, the Lord gave me, and it began my, uh, my passion for studying herbs and studying uh, natural medicine and understanding that food is medicine and that when we eat well, uh, we become a better steward over our bodies, which are the Lord God's temples. And so I, again, want to take just a little bit of time to share with you uh, some of the, um, the herbs and, and spices and some foods that you can begin to consume if you aren't already. Maybe you need to increase the amount uh, that you're um, eating of, of particular types of foods just to get your immune system healthier. Remember, uh, the Bible uh, declares that we are fearfully and we are wonderfully made, and God uh, is not surprised by what's going on in the earth realm at this time. Uh, and he's already made a way of escape for us. And he's already given to us that which we need. So I want to share, just, just take a little bit of time. Of course, this is not all um, that uh, there is to share with you. But for the time that I do have with you, I just feel that these are some important uh, foods that you would want to add or increase into your daily uh, meal planning. So, um, and these are, these are spices and herbs and foods that I uh, consume on a daily basis, on a daily basis. And so uh, I want to begin with one that we're very familiar with. I also want to share that, of course, if you're on medication, uh, if you have any type of systemic health conditions, any chronic conditions, even if you're going through an acute uh, cleansing or healing crisis at this time, you must be mindful because what God has created is very potent. And so you have to understand that if you're on medications, uh, uh, that these herbs can sometimes uh, produce effects that will not be beneficial for you. So you want to speak with your professional health care provider. You want to do your due diligence and really research out herbs for yourself. And you want to be very careful. For instance, the very first uh, that I'm going to mention is garlic. And we're all very familiar with garlic. Many of you have garlic right now in uh, your kitchen and have been using garlic for years. God made garlic to be a natural blood thinner. So if you are currently uh, uh, using a prescribed drug to uh, thin your blood, you must be very mindful and careful because the garlic is a blood thinner as well. So I'm always cautioning those who are on blood thinners to be careful of garlic. But even with that said, garlic is truly, truly, truly good for you. Garlic is antibacterial. It's anti uh, antiviral, it's antifungal, 
It's an antioxidant. It improves your immune system. It will help with uh, managing your blood pressure. It, 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 it's been shown to lower blood pressure and to uh, lower high cholesterol. It is really good for you. So if you're able to consume it, and if you're not already consuming it, then please consider adding garlic. It is truly something that would be very beneficial. It, it, it goes well with most uh, foods, and um, I know that it has a smell and it has a taste, but uh, there are ways that you can introduce it. And I say the benefits outweigh anything else. I've been eating uh, garlic almost daily for I don't know how many years. It's been a long, a long time. Uh, so um, it's also good for uh, bone health, and it's also good for detoxification. I made some notes here just in case uh, my memory doesn't serve me. I have something I can look back to for reference. Uh, the other thing I want to mention to you is cinnamon. I have cinnamon every day. Cinnamon, cinnamon is good for lowering blood sugar. Uh, it's also antifungal. It, um, it's an antioxidant. Uh, what I'm, all of these foods and herbs or spices that I'm going to mention to you, they have medicinal properties. So um, the, um, the, uh, the cinnamon, if I didn't already say it, is anti-inflammatory. So again, be very careful of it if you're taking any medications. I'm going to keep saying that. Uh, if you have any uh, very uh, uh, serious health uh, concerns, then please be very careful of what I'm sharing with you. Cloves, again, I have cloves every day antibacterial, good for the liver, good for liver health, also an antioxidant. It also helps to regulate the blood sugar just as, as cinnamon does. I also highly recommend fermented foods. Fermented foods are very good as it relates to your uh, microbiome, which is very important that you have the correct ratio of, of, of bacteria so that you are able to maintain your digestive Health fermented foods such as uh, sauerkraut and kimchi and kombucha, and you can make all of these that I've just mentioned in your own kitchen. And uh, of course, when you make something yourself in your own kitchen, you know exactly what's going into it, and you can feel better about what you're making for you and your family. But you want to have some type of fermented foods every day. It's good for the immune system. It also helps to protect you from viruses and those bacteria that are out there. So make sure that you would start including them. And if you're having any type of digestive uh, uh, concerns, as I just said, uh, these um, fermented foods work really well uh, for those conditions. Oregano, 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 antiviral, antibacteria. It's also antioxidant rich. And you can add, again, this oregano to your recipes to get it in uh, on a daily basis. Of course, you want to make sure that you're eating dark green leafy vegetables. The dark green uh, vegetables, uh, they allow you to know that the chlorophyll is rich in them. And you need these dark green leafy vegetables, but you also need vegetables of all colors. God gave us these vegetables. These vegetables have colors and the colors signify the different benefits so a variety of vegetables, a variety of raw vegetables, and a variety of cooked vegetables on a daily basis. And you need to have at least 80% of what you're eating needs to be those types of foods that are extremely nutritious for you, those types of foods that are, what I say, created by God, not processed foods, at least 80% on a daily basis. And you need these vegetables to help to keep your body's pH balanced. All of these things I'm saying to you pretty quickly because I'm on this video and I'm not just um, speaking about uh, one particular food, giving it the amount of um, time that it deserves, but this is just to uh, inspire you and to motivate you to look into more about eating healthily. Of course, many of you already are, so thank the Lord for uh, Him giving you the grace uh, to have the discipline that is necessary to eat well. But I do hope that if you're not already doing these things, please be inspired and be motivated. Uh, 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 fruits in moderation. I know many of you may be uh, have, having challenges with your blood sugar.
So fruits in moderation, but we do need fruits. So of course, adding them into your um, meal planning. You also want to exercise. I know you've seen some of my other videos, but exercising, movement is so important. Movement is probably more important than, the, than, than most of us even realize, but you must keep moving. I've shared with you the benefits of moving. Uh, I think I might just go ahead, there's a, another uh, a video that is uh, on this channel and I'll have it uh, somewhere so that you can get to that video. I'll have it uh, mentioned in the uh, description box. And uh, if you want to see that video uh, as it relates to moving and the benefits of moving, keep moving, keep moving out of your belly, out of your belly will flow the, the richness of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But just keep moving. God is always moving and he wants us to be moving. So exercising, walking, even if you're walking and if you're not going outside at this time, walk around wherever you're living. If you have steps and stairs and you're able to handle those, then uh, up and down the stairs a few times. If you're seated or bedridden, just wiggling your toes and your fingers. Uh, lifting your legs if possible. If you're not able to do it, maybe your caregiver will assist you. Uh, to you caregivers, those that are taking care of loved ones or even those who are just, that's your ministry and that's what you've been called by God to do, uh, making sure that your family members, your loved ones, or your, your clients, your patients are moving, just moving, moving, and moving. Also, I also shared not too long ago about proper breathing. You want to be sure that you're getting in all the oxygen that you can get into the very lower lobes of your lungs, and then you want to have a nice deep exhale so that as you are bringing in oxygen, you're also exhaling the carbon dioxide, and as you uh, uh, exhale that carbon dioxide, you're getting rid of toxins and any waste materials that need to be exhaled. So inhaling deeply and exhaling deeply throughout the day and learning how to do that. When I am teaching how to breathe properly, I'll just give you this in a quick summary. You breathe in through your nostrils, and as you breathe in through your nostrils, your lower abdominal area should expand. So you inhale through your nostrils, as you inhale through your nostrils, your lower abdominal area will expand. And then as you exhale through your nostrils, then what will happen is your abdominal muscles will contract, meaning that uh, they will move towards your, your spine. So you inhale, there's a, 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 a expansion of your lower abdominal area. You exhale, and there's a contraction of those abdominal muscles. When you do that, you know that you're getting in that air and you're, and you're breathing and it's getting into the lower lobes of your lungs. It takes some practice and you usually inhale. It depends on your lung capacity. If you're able to inhale for a count of three and then you exhale for a count of three and if you can uh, do that for a count of five, maybe you can do a count of seven. It depends on your lung capacity. However, the number of counts that you can inhale that's where you start, and then you'll begin to improve. But inhaling and exhaling properly throughout the day does wonders for your blood pressure. I shared that in a video as well. It does wonders for keeping you nice and relaxed, helping to reduce any type of uh, effects that come from stress. So please practice that and work on breathing uh, properly. I also want to remind you again of water. You know that you need water. Again, for the average healthy adult, you would divide your weight in two. And that number would be the number of ounces of water you need per day. So as an example, if someone weighs 150 pounds, 150, they would divide 150, 150, divided by two is 75, 75. That means that person needs 75 ounces of water per day. Give or take a few ounces depending on how active you are. Again, that's for a healthy person. If you have kidney uh, conditions, etc., then of course you speak to your professional health care provider about the amount of water you need per day. But the average adult, it's your weight divided by two equals the number of ounces of water your body requires on a daily basis. 
And sometimes people ask me, well, what about juice? And if I drink tea, uh, does that, uh, does that, uh, does that um, uh, go into the number of uh, cups of water I'm drinking per day? Well, you want clear water. You want uh, that uh, uh, equation is based on you drinking clear water, just water. Uh, I know that tea is uh, water, but it also has those, uh, those leaves in it, tea leaves, and you notice that the water turns colors. That means that your body's going to have to do some digesting. So you want to just have some clear water. It goes right through the system. Uh, the last thing I want to remind you of as it relates to um, uh, helping to strengthen and uh, to build up your immune system, make sure you get enough Sleep. You want to make sure that you get enough sleep. Uh, when we're sleeping, the body is repairing. Our organs are repairing. Uh, we are getting rejuvenated. We're getting, uh, we're refreshing. Growth takes place when we are sleeping, and we need sleep. Uh, the body just needs to repair from what it goes through during a typical day. So getting your rest and getting your sleep is necessary. You also want to. Uh, Sleep because dreams are important and we are dreaming and we need to dream. We need to hear from the Lord. So you need your sleep. The other reason that it's so important because the longer you live, you want to, you want to, God to keep you uh, having a healthy brain and uh, you want your mind uh, to, to, to be the, the mind of Christ. And so uh, when we're sleeping, the brain actually detoxifies. There's a system uh, uh, that, that's called the glymphatic system, and it helps your, it, it is responsible for your brain uh, detoxifying during the sleep process. So there's so much more, and I know the Lord is going to use me to share so much more with the body of Christ as it relates to health and healing, biblical health and healing. As I said, this is uh, what I've been doing for decades, um, I think I, uh, over three decades. Uh, this is what I've been studying, and so I am just so grateful that the Lord is allowing me to share it with you. Share this video. Share it. It may help someone. You don't know what people are going through. Just some information to motivate them and inspire them to just uh, continuing on their studies as well. We need, in this hour, to be healthy. We need to be excellent stewards of our bodies. Remember, by the stripes of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we are healed. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I look forward to when I'm back again to give you more of what the Lord has given me to share with you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So this is day five of the microgreens. There's a mixture here. We have some broccoli and we have some kale and some other greens. These are the microgreens. And again, it's day five, and I've been sharing with you how important it is to have some type of garden, whether it be indoors, this is my windowsill, or outdoors.